probably the worst trapper um, next to probably Crow. But I think that's more because Crow doesn't really have a purpose right now. <laughs> High level monster woes, so true. That's fine. I don't, like, the invisibility wasn't really what made Decoy good. Decoy's made the poopy with you always. <laughs> um, what made, what, so think of Decoy as a mobile spider. Like, it's basically to, like, separate and spread out damage. So if you have a single target healer like Val, you send Decoy at one person, go attack somebody else. Val has to choose which of the two to heal, and then you can go from there and make the combat. If you're playing against AoE healer, then you just decoy somebody into a wall and then you just murder the shit out of them because they can't keep up with your heals. And so decoy is a lot more flexible with that. That being said though, decoy AI is still derp-tastic. Well, Crow, like, so Crow, the only advantage Crow has over any of the hunters is Gobi. But the thing is, though, with Planet Scanner and the way that the game is now, like, Gobi isn't as super important. Um, and yes, you can go through, like, armor, like, Crow's great, like, at stage 3 if the monster happens to have one health, but, like, I feel like any other trapper would have just been better. But yes, quality, feel free, we can, we can always commiserate with each other about our monster woes. I will totally agree with that. And I still feel Kraken's mobility is still, like, like, Kraken is strong, but I feel like Kraken would be, a, like, the big, the, but the biggest complaint I have about Kraken is the mobility just still feels like it stinks. I don't know what it is, I don't know if it's just not fast enough or whatever, but it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. bad taste in my mouth. Oh, so the monster might get stuck here. Uh, they should be able to. So if you had a good set of headphones, you'll hear the monster sniffing here. Shit the tree. I thought he said shoot the tree. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the traversal is very wonky. And for some reason, like, the, my, like my biggest weakness when I play Kraken is I, I'm not as good as other players who can stay in the air more than me. Um, I'm not going to abuse the stupid dome glitch because that's cheesy as fuck. And I, I have no respect for people to do that. But aside from that, for some reason, I always just... I, I end up naturally too close to the ground, and that's why I usually take a lot of damage with my Kraken. Otherwise, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'd be I'd do a lot better with him. Yeah, no problem, Babouche. I'm glad that you uh, were able to play. And that being said, I think, I think Gorgon's my favorite traversal. It can still be wonky at times, but it just it feels so silky smooth, just sailing through the air. I just want to make a compilation of Gorgon just flying away with the sail song playing in the background. In fact, let's go ahead and do it. Oh, I shouldn't have put that song. Crap. Because this is going to go on YouTube, and then YouTube will flag it for copyright, bitch. Wow. So, uh, again, Medic and Support are leading the pack and with half health to boot. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, probably engaged with Sloth and or Reavers. Uh, but this is not how you want to start an engagement, everyone. I know that it's super exciting to get to a monster when he's evolving, but you cannot do that. Like, if you do, this, this is just an easy way. Um, granted, they were able to pull it out. Oh, Dome. Where's the Dome? No, Dome. And the monster got away. Um, so that could have been really bad for the hunters. Uh, if, if the monster was any better, that would have been two strikes on the medic and support right then and there. <laughs> I don't want to go into the dome glitch, and if you're in chat, try not to talk about it, because I don't want it to spread more than what it is, but it's really, really horrible. Uh, it basically allows the Kraken to ignore the sky limit and can fly super high up. Yeah, I agree, quality. Yeah, Her, the the landing uh, heavy while flying through the air is very inconsistent. Okay, so here we go. And again, support uh, kind of out of position. I need to pay attention to this map a bit more. Uh, Trapper really far away, but is probably going to secure a dome in a second, actually. Uh, here we go. Oh, uh, but the Trapper decided to cold, fall back instead of, yeah, instead of ho holding the, the position. Uh, 
I didn't say how it works. All I said is what it does. I mean, that's like saying, yes, hacking gives you infinite health. That doesn't tell you how to do it. Angry Santa, welcome to the herd. I appreciate that follow. Okay, so again, the holding the dome, I like this. Monster really focusing the trapper here. Uh, between Hank and Emmett, uh, Emmett's actually got pretty decent heal burst now. Um, that should be able to. Uh, yeah, we're going to get the dome. And we got a dome. So good areas to fight. Go from this rock to this rock to this one, if possible. Um, and again, everyone's on the low ground already. The moment the dome comes down, well, actually, in general, hunters should never be on the low ground. You lose line of sight. There's never any reason to be on the low ground. Like as a as as a hunter, you, yeah. And and here we go. Oh, and there comes the the. Well, I don't know why the medic. Again, the medic's out of position. Why is the medic, especially Emmett? You can throw healing buoys. I almost said healing buoys. Um, and just oh, now line of sight again. All of these issues are caused because people are fighting on the low ground uh, and being aggressive. The medic doesn't need to move. The the support doesn't need to move. Um, the assault could probably be a little bit closer in the monster's face, um, but I'm not. But other than that, okay. So they are doing a really good job of mitigating damage, and now they're starting to fight a little bit better. Notice how they're doing. Uh, now the medic stayed stayed still. You know they're t taking the high ground. This is much 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 better. Um, and here we go. Hank's about to go down here. Oh, nice rock dodge. That that was brilliant. Um, monster took about a bar of health. Uh, they were doing really good there, but the, the problem was is that they, it took too long for them to get into good positions. Alright, take it easy, Twisty. Thanks for stopping by. I think that Quantum Kyra with a good team is actually pretty decent. Because Quantum Kyra is tanky as hell. She, she's similar to Rogue Val, and I, I would probably position her about the same uh, decency as a Rogue Val in terms of how good she is. Exactly. This game is not... Okay, so so one of the big misnomers with this game that I feel I want to address, because it's a very big misconception. This game is not... The monster stomps and takes no health damage, or the hunters win and take no strike damage. You're supposed to lose permanent health. You're supposed to get strikes. That is a fact. You that the game is not balanced around a 100% win rate or 100% or health w win rate. There's always gonna be strikes. There's always gonna be health damage. Basically, the entire game is trading how much health for how much strikes. So if I trade one bar of health for one strike, generally speaking, that's a pretty decent trade. If you trade four bars of health for one strike, that's usually a bad trade, and that means that the hunters are at the advantage. And so it's all about managing those two resources as much as possible. Certain team compositions force the monster to take a lot more health than they normally would for a strike, like the Lazarus uh, Cabot teams or Emmett uh, Cabot teams. Those are all about not surviving, but about forcing the monster to lose a disproportionate amount of health compared to one strike. And so their different team compositions have different ratios. What is acceptable for one strike for a monster might be a different for another composition or a different monster. And so it's all always, always different. Hey Mike, how's it going? And Karim Cheese, welcome to the herd. I appreciate that follow. Thank you very much. But but the game is all about trading one resource for another and managing that. And so if you go down, you need to record this and pass out. Uh, all these videos will go up on YouTube uh, eventually. But but this game is all it, 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 when you boil it down, it's down to the monster's health and strikes, and that's that's the only real resource in the game. Jetpack management helps mitigate and makes the monster take more health damage for each strike. But if they, if, but if the hunters, oh, nice orbital. I should probably focus more on this. So notice how hard it is for Goliath to kill somebody when they're in the air or up on the high ledge. Um, if they were in a good position now, um, this would be really, really hard. I do like that uh, the the uh, support and medic are working pretty well. Um, I don't agree that the the trapper should be a focus here. Oh, assault! Take the rock. Okay didn't take the rock, but he did get hit by it. 
Um, right now, a lot of damage being spread out. You don't want to do that against the Emmet. Um, and you really don't want to focus with, with, when there's a Hank and a Heal. When there, whenever there's a Hank, you have to go for the Medic or the Support. You just cannot go after anybody else because a good Hank and a decent Healer will make your life an absolute hell. So right now, Monster lost armor, so now he is working at permanent health. And so, yeah, Hank is going to go down, but how much permanent health are the team going to be able to sacrifice uh, to, to get him back up? So right now, again, don't pick people up. That's another big mistake I see a lot of people make. A lot of medics have area or ways to heal somebody from the ground from a distance, and picking up somebody means you're giving the monster twice as much damage with one ability, because he's always going to knock you off uh, unless the monster is really, really bad. Um, and so it's never worth picking up. A okay. Barring super good teams that know how to mitigate properly. Um, but on, on the average skill level, don't ever try and pick up your teammate. It's not worth it. You have Emmett on your team for crying out loud. He can throw down a beacon. Uh, he can go ahead. And that's another thing to worry about is Emmett teams are actually surprisingly good if they know how to use and abuse the, the, uh, the beacon. Okay, so Trapper. Oh, I do not know why the dome got thrown. Oh, that is so smart of them. This is a brilliant play. Medic is outside. Everyone's going to get teleported in. All the Medic has to... Oh, no, Medic or Monster side. That's unfortunate. That would have been a brilliant play if he got it off. So now Emic is... Or the, everyone's going to drop in in 15 seconds. And the Medic can go ahead and throw down another uh, shield in just a second. Uh, the Relay might get destroyed by then, actually. They're going to have to do really, really, really fast to get the Monster off that Relay. <laughs> so, really good attempt by Emmett there at the end. That was really, 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 really good. GG. GG. Okay, so uh, first thing with the monster. Monster, you were doing a pretty good job. Um, there were a couple of times when you were trying to juke. Um, I feel like a better team would have been better with their cuts, uh, and you would have just wasted a little bit of time hiding down a few areas. Um, you always kind of want to be on the move if possible, um, so just be careful of that um, uh, uh, if you if you can. But but not not bad. I, I, you know, it's not a huge big mistake or anything like that. Uh, that being the case, though, um, I noticed that you were focusing the trapper a lot. Um, and uh, I, especially with a Hank, like a regular Hank, not even a tech Hank, um, a good team, you will never down a non-medic or support. If there's ever a Hank on the team, the medic or the support has to be your number one priority uh, or, or against the good team, you're really, really going to pay um, if you ever do get a strike on with somebody. So just be very, very careful with that. Um, otherwise, the rest of your stuff, you were doing pretty good. You did some really good combos, made good use of charge and leaps. Um, really good job overall. Um, with regards to the hunters, just remember against Goliath, you want to have the high ground as much as possible. Um, that first uh, uh, dome by the beach area, uh, it started off really, really, really bad. Um, and so, uh, it, but eventually towards the end, you all started having the high ground. Uh, and, uh, and the medic, like, so the medic was starting to chase after them. Um, and she always wanted to play monster. Yeah, I was pretty much in Juggernaut. up. Hitting anything was right. Yep, that happens. Be a monster. It's okay. Um, and so just be very, very careful with that. Um, make sure you're always on the high ground. There's very, I, in fact, I, I, I want to, I'll put this out on the plate and say there's never a reason to be on the low ground against a Goliath on any map. And I'm trying to think if there's any reason to do that, and I can't think of a single one. The high ground gives you better vantage points. Uh, one second. Mr. Cherian, welcome to the herd. I appreciate that follow. Uh, correct, yeah. And, Tor and Torvald is one of those people that really takes a lot of practice. Um, you, you Eventually you get to the point where you can estimate where the monster is going to be, especially if he's hard chasing somebody um, or if he's on the high ground. Because if he's on the high ground, if you aim the mortars past him, they only have to go up about 45 degrees and then they'll hit the monster, assuming he's still there. And so the distance is really, really short. The Crick, welcome to the herd. I appreciate that follow as well. <clears throat> <laughs> Hank is public's number one enemy. Pretty much. Sometimes it is more correct to go after the healer, but it just kind of depends on the team composition and situational awareness. Most of the time, Hank is the correct answer, though. Um, 
Yeah, no worries, Digital. And it's one of those things that it definitely comes with practice. Um, but but I, I definitely, I think I can say with a surety, there's no reason to be on the low ground. You've got better vantage points, so you can see people, uh, the monster cutting. Um, he's less likely to get by you because you're on the high ground and not running around a pillar. Um, every time I see a, a, a hunter when like rock, walk around a pillar instead of just sit on the top, I laugh because I'm able to get by him when all, all it would have taken was for him to climb up on the high ground and be there. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so always have the high ground, uh, and remember Slim, try not to be too aggressive. There was the, there was the second dome, like right after he got, right, right when he went to stage two, uh, both the support and the, the medic were both at the front of the pack. You were very, very eager to get a dome and both of you had like 60% health. I don't know if it was reavers and or a sloth or mammoth birds, but you had low health and like you were both ahead of the, the assault and trapper. And I feel that if the monster was better, both of you would have gotten a strike, and, and that would have been really, 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 really bad. Um, so just be very, very mindful. Don't be super aggressive. Um, it can be very hard not to be aggressive when the rest of your team, like the Assault and Trapper, is not keeping pace with the monster. But it's much better to let a possible, you know, especially in evolution, because dumbing when a monster evolves or doing damage when a monster evolves doesn't really mean anything in this game. Um, chances are uh, the monsters or the dome's not going to be ready, and the monster knows that, or the monster is going to just take a little bit of damage and be able to get away anyway so being super aggressive when a monster evolves is usually not the correct answer uh, so just be very careful about that otherwise good job um, I was the I was saying that met uh, Emmett towards the first half of the game was moving around too much um, remember you can throw buoys they can go pretty far now um, so you don't really have to move too much and so there are a lot of times when you are caught out of position um, whereas no, towards the end of the match you're kind of more stationary uh, and that makes it a lot easier same thing with Hank remember if you're all on the high ground you all have line of sight you all don't you can jump from one to the other uh, and you can avoid a lot of abilities with Goliath so just be very careful about your positioning and not being too aggressive uh, let's go ahead and let's hop into the next one